Hi, so we have looked at this problem in a couple of different ways on pre previous videos, um, and now we're going to look at it another way, and we're going to use the central limit theorem here. So, um, same problem, talking about the lifespan of batteries for this tablet computer, um, and I just wrote that x, our variable, is the battery lifespan, and we know that x is normally distributed with a mean of 2.3 and a standard deviation of 0.4. So there's that notation that tells us that x is normally distributed and tells us the mean and standard deviation. Um, so now we're looking at, uh, we've been looking at if x, the probability that x is greater than just one particular value, less than one particular value, um, and we've also done a problem where we've, we've been looking for x given some areas, okay? Um, but now we're going to look at a central limit theorem problem in that we are looking at 40 of these tablet computers that have been bought, and we want the probability that the average of all these 40 um, will be more than two and a half years. Okay, so an employee um, or a company has brought, bought these computers and they want to know, okay, maybe what is the probability that it's going to be a little bit more than average, that, that, these, that this group of computers will last a little bit more um, than average. Okay, so because of the central limit theorem, since x is normally distributed with a mean of 2.3 and a standard deviation of 0.4, Okay, um, we know it's normally distributed, so it really doesn't even matter how many um, of these that we get because of the central limit theorem, but we, it doesn't even have to be normally distributed as long as we are getting more than 30, and we, we meet both of those requirements here. So um, the central limit theorem tells us, we use CLT for central limit theorem, um, so this is by the central limit theorem that x bar, the average, because we're looking for the average lifetime. Um, so in this question, we're not asking about x, the battery lifespan. We're looking about x bar as our variable, the average of 40 batteries, or 40 of these um, laptop or tablet computers. Okay, so we've changed our variable. Our variable was the battery lifespan of one of these, and now it's the average of 40 of these, okay? But luckily, by the central limit theorem, x, is, x bar is still normally distributed. Same mean as our x's of 2.3, and a standard deviation of 0.4, divided by the square root of n, and our n is 40. Okay, so by the central limit theorem, we know that our new variable of the average of these is still normally distributed because x was normally distributed and because x, there's more than 30. Um, and we know that it has the same mean as our original distribution, and it has a standard deviation of our original standard deviation divided by the square root of n. And our n here is the number of laptops that we've bought, and they are, there's 40 of them. Okay? So now it's asking for the probability um, that it will be more than two and a half years. So taking all these words, it's asking for the probability that x bar, the average of these 40 batteries, will be more than, more than is greater than, two and a half years. Okay. So that's um, what we're looking for. Just simply put, the probability that the average of these 40 is going to be greater than two and a half years. Now, um, same procedure that we've done in previous problems like this, um, finding the z-score and then converting to a standard normal and then looking it up in the table. So we're going to go through that same procedure. The difference is, um, is that now we're dealing with this as our mean and this as our standard deviation. So it's just a slightly different z-score formula. Um, we have x bar instead of x, still subtracting mu. Um, and then we are dividing by the standard deviation. This is because mu is the same as, as here and here. And we're dividing by the standard deviation, but our standard deviation is sigma over the square root of n. The standard deviation of our x bars is what goes here, and it's sigma over the square root of n. Okay? 
So plugging these values in, our x bar is what we're looking for, the 2.5. Our mu is 2.3. And then sigma over the square root of n, our sigma was 0.4, our square root of n is square root of 40. And I'm just using, you can even think of this as mu over sigma, where, where we're dealing with this, and our standard deviation is here, okay? So do this. Make sure that if you're putting this in your calculator, that you are using parentheses. You've got to put parentheses if you're putting it all at once. And I do recommend that you put it in all at once to avoid some rounding errors. Um, make sure that you put the top and the bottom in parentheses, or otherwise you're going to get a wrong um, z-score and mess up your probability. Okay? So make sure you're putting it in the calculator correctly, because if we ever have this division bar um, with a top and bottom, then it is assumed that we have parentheses, and we want to do this first and this first, and then do the division last. That's always assumed with a division bar. Okay, so we get this, and it is 3.16. Okay, so convert this to a standard normal problem with a z-score, because this is a z-score, of 3.16 greater than 3.16. Then just as before, we're going to ask ourselves, okay, what is the area that we're looking for here? We are looking for the area um, greater than, that's the area to the right. Okay, greater than is this way, to the right. The table gives us area to the left, so do that conversion. We have to do a 1 minus the value that we look up in the table. If you look up in the table, you're looking along the edges, finding the value in the body of the table, um, and you're going to get um, 0.9992. And if you do this subtraction, you get 0 0.0008. So, very small probability of that happening. All right, so there's using the central limit theorem um, in a normal distribution problem.